What is up everyone? Scott the Trout Hammer here with Pex to Pisces and the day has finally arrived. The meat and potatoes of any YouTube fishing channel, fishing, actually getting out on the lake and showing you how to catch some fish. So excited for this day. I, you know, come in here, give me a hug. Okay, that might have been weird. So I'm gonna teach you my preferred method to catch stock trout. This is the same thing I used at Roaring River with that short video I did last week. I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks along the way, things that I watch for, like things I see working on the surface of the water and also based on the bite, what actually I'm gonna change and adjust along the way. But now, you're not just fishing, you're fishing with the trout hammer. Now I'll talk about the reasons why I picked this spot. This is actually my favorite spot I know to catch stock trout. Now, in my opinion, stock trout is actually harder to catch than wild trout. Wild trout, I mean, they're, they're in a mode of feed, 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 feed. Something comes by, they're gonna bite it because they think it might be food. Trout, stock trout are a little different. They haven't been in a system long enough to know the difference between food and a lure, but they are so, they can be so picky on what they want. Like, like that video I showed you at Roaring River. It took me two hours to figure out what the trout wanted. That's the struggle you can have with stock trout. With wild trout, I mean, you find a spot in the river you know they're gonna be, you just go there and fish and hammer them all day. But here, with stock trout, you actually have to find where they are and find what they want. So trout, even stock trout, they are natively a river fish. They are biologically designed to live in a current. That's where they're most comfortable. So they're going to find a current, either a creek bed or an underwater current in a lake or a pond. So this spot right here has a creek that flows in to feed the lake. And there's a seam, I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's a seam on top of the water where the, the current of the creek mixes with the uh, stationary water of the lake and that seam right there is where the trout like to sit and they stay they sit there facing the current striking things that come down bugs uh, zooplankton anything that comes down that might be food or something that catches their attention and they reactively strike at it something like a spinner bait or a spoon bait or a grub, things I'm gonna show you while we're fishing today. And probably the most natural presentation you can offer is the best to start with, see if there's trout around here. So I'm gonna throw out one of these red trout magnet grubs. Just cast into the current, let the current carry it. As a fish. That's a good size one. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's a big trout. Oh yeah. Look at that. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That worm there. That two pounder. Yeah, that's that's top five trout for me in terms of size. Besides the brooders, I don't count those. So let's talk lure fishing for trout. What I got here is I got my tray that I take in my tackle bag with me whenever I go trout fishing. These are all the lures that I take when I decide I want to go trout hammering. And probably the most classic lure when you think of a trout lure are your spinners and your spoons. Uh, examples of spinners, you got like your rooster tail style spinner. They have a, a thin willow style leaf and then some sort of feathering on the end with a hook to give it a different style action. Panther Martins, which have a unique blade on the Panther Martins. These things make a lot of noise. These things are real easy to get spinning in the water once you cast. Uh, you, got your, you got your Blue Foxes. Another style spinner that has a big blade that makes a lot of noise 
when you retrieve. Uh, Blue Fox, I really love the way they color the lures also. I mean, those, the weight right there isn't just a weight, it's a bell. That makes noise on its own also. So another really good brand I enjoy are the MEPS spinner baits. I mean, I take just about every color and every size that comes with me because you're going to go through a lot of different presentations to get an idea of what the fish want. So like with a rooster tail, like I was saying, that really thin willow style leaf, this lure has much better action on a slow retrieve. That's how a willow leaf gets its action on a slow retrieve. Uh, the, the way you know that is the shallower the blade, think of it like a spoon, fill it with water, the shallower it is, the uh, how much less you could fill that spoon with, that will work better on a slow retrieve. A deeper spoon actually works better on a faster retrieve, and that's something like the, uh, the Panther Martins here have. Panther Martins have a much deeper spoon. So these tend to have better reaction on a faster retrieve, but the Panther Martin's blades on their spinnerbaits are not like any other blade on a spinnerbait. This thing you could slow retrieve, you could fast retrieve, you could almost jig this thing, and it'll still have plenty of good action on it. And the same with a Blue Fox style spinner. It has a wider paddle style blade, but still relatively deep, so better action on a faster retrieve with the Blue Fox style spinner. And with spoons, some examples of spoons I take with me, uh, I've got Little Cleos, I've got Tama Spoons, Tama Spoons are my favorite, uh, Blue Fox Spoons also. There we go. That's a good one. On the Thomas spoon. Yep. That's a good one. Look at the fish. Yeah. You want to pet him? No. <laughs> he won't hurt you. It's probably. Yeah. He's like, let me go. Oh, right, see. Okay, I'm gonna put him back. Now, one thing I really like about blue fox spinners is for their size, they are sleek and aerodynamic. These things are really easy to cast. Like, for example, how big they are compared to other lures. This is a quarter ounce Thomas spoon, and this is a quarter ounce blue fox. The blue fox is a lot thicker, but the blue fox has this sort of plastic groove that they put inside here. I mean, this mimics an egg sac on this side, but this right here, that plastic groove, you can fill that groove with your scent if you're going to use scent when you're retrieving a spoon. But besides the size and the shape of these things, these have this really awesome, big, sweeping roll when you retrieve them. It's something that if you see other people throwing all the same kind of spoons and the fish have been seen, that action all day, and they become acclimated to it. You can throw something like a big fox at, or a blue fox at them, to give them something they haven't seen, and they got to come check it out. Now, I'm not much of a fan of swivels. On spinners and spoons, I do use them because one, the purpose of the lure is to spin, and I don't want my line to twist. So a swivel allows the lure to spin and not twist the line. Also, allows for quick and easy changing of lures. If I want to change color, change size, or whatever. But one of my favorite things to do with lures like spinners, spoons, uh, curly tail grubs, anything like that, anything that is going to create action with the retrieve. If you're fishing a spot that has a current, you can just cast into the current and just hold your lure in place. That current is gonna create the action of the lure and it's just going to suspend in that spot, creating noise, displacing water, drawing the fish to you, snagging the bottom.
<laughs> and that is why I use P-Line. It's probably a 30 pound log I just pulled up with 8 pound line. And so the reason why I'm using a red rooster tail is like I like I said at the beginning it's it's about figuring out what the fish want you know the, the whole point of using two rods like I'm using like I have one over there with a bite alarm on it and I have some power bait on there and I'm casting and retrieving with lures on my other rod the point is not to catch more fish or to catch fish faster though that could happen and that's a nice side effect of the system but it's to present multiple presentations at once try to figure out what color, what flavor, what sort of action that the fish are already keying into and what they'll strike on. So since I already had one, one really good one on that red worm, I'm starting with a red rooster tail to see if it's the color or if it's the type of lure that earned the strike. So you know, like I'm using red lures with this rod and green bait with the other rod, I'm fishing two different colors, two different presentations at the same time. The Castmasters, they're they're technically a spoon bait. They're in the same area of any sporty goods store when you're looking for fishing lures. But Castmasters are unique lures. I mean, they're really in a class unto their own. For example, a spoon bait. When you retrieve a spoon bait, the spoon is going to spin it's going to uh sort of sway back and forth if you decide to jig the spoon like this one it's gonna like you jig it up and when it falls it's gonna fall sort of in that action jig it back up it'll fall like that action there or if you're just going to retrieve the spoon it's going to spin and kick and displace water and it's gonna make this like Thud, 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 noise like that, depending on how fast you retrieve it. A cast master doesn't do that. A cast master sort of swims back at you. Cast masters work really great on a slow retrieve versus most spoon baits. And you see cast master when you retrieve it, it doesn't spin, it doesn't twist, it doesn't roll. It sort of, it sort of does this action back and forth real fast. And that sort of lateral side-to-side -side flashing is a really good way to get a trout's attention. On the cast, master. Something about this pond and cast masters though. There's another. <laughs> now another great trout lure that I always bring with me are small plastics, small worms, small tube baits, small curly tail grubs, even even small swim baits. You'd be surprised how many trout I've caught off uh, these small jigging swim baits like this. And what you do is you take a jig head and you rig the jig head so the hook is coming out the same side as or the same direction as the tail is curled. That's how you get this uh, this kicking and twisting action that comes off of that tail when you retrieve it. Now with the smaller tube plastics, uh, when you have it rigged up on a jig, these things don't have a lot of action on just a retrieve like a curly tail grub would, but with these things you want to sort of flick your rod tip up and down as you retrieve and that will make this lure dance off the bottom or middle of the water column or even off the top if you keep your, uh, if you keep really getting shallow. It sort of mimics a uh, a big nymph in the water. But one thing I began doing with my crappie fishing 
and I found that it actually works really well with trout fishing also, is Berkeley makes this uh, pow these power bait crappie nibbles. They're these little, tiny marshmallow style baits. And I've caught literally every species of fish in ponds and streams in Oregon off of these things. They'll catch, they will catch everything. And what I'll do is I'll take a grub or a tube bait, whatever I'm using, with a small hook like that, and I'll put one of these crappie nibbles on the hook far enough back that the hook point and barb are exposed. It doesn't mess with the action of the lure, but it gives a slightly different color to your lure along with whatever color your grub you're using, and it'll add some scent, something for the fish to taste in the water and see that might actually be food. There we go. <laughs> so you're more than welcome to fish here. Oh, thank you. Uh, biggest one today off my smallest lure. <laughs> go figure. Most, oh god. Most of the time I, fly, I, I mean, fishing, fishing. But most of the time I fly fish. Yeah, that guy was barely hooked. Okay, so show you guys what to do when you catch a trout and you intend to keep it. So you want to quickly and mercifully kill the fish so it doesn't suffer. At least that's what I recommend. I hope that's what you guys do. It's what I always do. So you've probably seen videos of people like clubbing fish or hitting with a rock. I really don't like doing that. It sort of brutalizes the fish. It doesn't immediately kill it. So what I do is I take my fillet knife and the fish's brain is right here. So I just go in, stab right into the brain. You'll feel the fish seize up, and then it's, and then it's done. Quickest and most merciful way to end a fish that you decide to keep. One thing that's similar across all trout lures are lures that provide flash, lures that provide sound in the water, be it vibration or kicking anything that uh, displaces water at a fast pace. Trout like to chase lures, and I'm sure you've seen one type of lure that's been taking the bass world by storm, and they've started making smaller ones for pan fishing, is the Chatterbait. This Chatterbait Mini, it's a weighted grub, very small one, that has this blade on the end and you hook up your line on that swivel at the end of the blade, this thing makes so much noise in the water, it, it, it'll almost startle you when you retrieve chatterbaits, especially little chatterbaits, feeling how much vibration is coming from the tip of the rod, but that's how you know you're getting the proper action from that lure. And they even make chatterbaits that have small swim baits attached to them or curly tail grubs. So let's talk about bait for a little bit. Now, the years that I've been trout fishing using a ton of different baits out there, be it worms, uh, honey worms, uh, salmon eggs, those little Potskis fireballs, I use those for river fish all the time. But when it comes to fishing stock trout, there really is no comparison to power bait. It is the king of the trout fishing bait world. Um, and you could use either the crappie nibbles, like I said, uh, bringing a selection of colors with you. Use the power bait eggs, which these are just small floating eggs that come to you in these strings like this. And you just break off two to three, 
to put on your hook, your hook depending on the size of hook you're using. But I mean, the number of colors they have for these things, you know, you got like a lemon lime color, you've got a half white with blue flake that has garlic scent on it. Trout love garlic. You got a bubble gum colored, fluorescent orange colored, uh, chartreuse, probably my top power bait egg, uh, pink or like or salmon egg red for the eggs. And then another great power bait choice is your dough. And the dough is just this, this thick, stinky paste that you pull out with your finger and just roll up into a ball and put on your hook. And again, I bring a wide selection of colors with me. I've got like, uh, got pink lemonade, yellow corn. Uh, this purple power bait dough is actually nymph scented, uh, cheese scented. Uh, <laughs> almost seems like cheating really fishing for stock trout, but they even have a hatchery pellet formula. Uh, again, chartreuse, uh, marshmallow white, a lot of the colors I bring. But the real, the real key for taking power bait with you is to take a variety of color, a variety of scents, a variety of flavors, because what I will absolutely destroy fish on one day, I'll come back a week later, they won't have a bit of it. I'll use a completely different color and it's, you know, out there fish every cast all over again. So it doesn't really matter which flavor you bring, but bring a selection so you have the choices. That's a good one. Look at that one. So this was a successful fish. It has a ton of bait still in its mouth. Oh, hello. Didn't have time to set that one in the rod holder. He just nailed it. One of my favorite power bait presentations is dough bait because you can choose the size of a bait that you present to the trout and you can also use a much smaller hook like I'm gonna do today. One thing you want to do with this dough bait though because you're gonna be molding it with your hands and this is a practice really just with any bait you use, general practice I use with fishing, take a handful of grass and just grind that up in the palm of your hands, get it in your fingers. What that will do, that will help mask the human scent from the bait when you apply it onto the hook. Get your hands nice and green And you can see here, I'm using pretty small of a hook. I think that's a size 14. So I'm gonna use a small amount of dough bait. That might actually be too much, but let's roll it up and see what it looks like. Okay, no, that's good. So sort of roll it up, pack it into a tight ball. And then press your hook into the middle of the ball to obscure the hook, points, the shank, the knot, and just like mold it around your hook, form sort of a, a teardrop shape. And that's gonna float up like that. 
and fish can't see the line, can't see the hook, thinks it's food. You know, one thing I want to teach people with this fishing channel is how to fish Oregon because Oregon is so different from a lot of places. You know, you're, we're further north from California and, you know, the bass right now, they're in the pre-spawn, starting to spawn. You see a lot of fishing videos, a lot of bass videos from people fishing bass in Texas. At Texas, they're already in their post-spawn. It's, the seasons are so much different here from other places. You know, especially this year, we just had the hardest winter probably we've ever had. I mean, at least the hardest one I can remember. I'm 33 years old. And so a lot of the bodies of water that I'm so familiar with fishing have changed so much because of what's gone on during the winter. It's almost like learning how to fish Oregon all over again. I bring a handful of rods with me when I go trout fishing. I don't just bring one rod that I expect to do everything. I actually have a selection of rods that each does different things. So I'll show you what I got, what I use here. I use for primarily my bait rod, I use all my power bait on this rod. Got a six foot nine inch Fenwick Nighthawk. It's a medium heavy rod that has a medium fast taper. So the taper is about halfway between the middle and the tip of the rod. And it's a good rod for leaving in the water with bait on there because uh, this can this can land just about any size of fish. The biggest fish I personally caught on this rod is 15 pounds. It I know it can handle more though. I have 20 pound braid on as a as a main line, and I mostly keep rigged on here a Carolina rig that I use with the power bait. So I have about a foot and a half, two foot leader that goes to a size four octopus hook, and I'll put three pieces of power bait on that to float it because I use a trocar hook. They're pretty dense. They require one more egg to float. And then you just have that go to a small turn swivel. And on the other side of the turn swivel, you have a half ounce for the size of rod I'm using, the size of bait I'm using, that's the size of weight I use. I have a half ounce egg sliding weight with a bead in there to protect the knot on the swivel. And the purpose for the Carolina rig, how it works is you cast out and that weight will sit on the bottom while your power bait floats up above it. It's a great rig for ponds or lakes or anything that really doesn't have much of a current in it. And also if it's really windy that day, you can adjust the length of your leader. So if you wanted to uh, run something close to the surface, something you would traditionally with like say a worm and bobber, you can run a, long, a longer leader on the Carolina rig to get it up that high. But I usually keep it around two feet. A lot of the places I fish around here aren't very deep. And the way that works, the way it works here is you have the sensitivity when you feel your line to know when a fish bites and the fish is going to pull but he's not going to move the weight the weight's going to stay there stationary on the bottom so the fish doesn't feel the weight the fish is going to think this is food and it's just going to hammer this and take off with it one thing that's really helpful if you're fishing with a two rod system like i do where you have one staying in the water in a rod holder with bait and you're fishing with lures on the other rod or if you're in a situation where uh you can't actually physically sit there and watch your rod the entire time like if you have children with you and you've got to watch the children or if you have your rod a few feet away from you to get closer to the water they make these bite alarms and all you do is you clip it onto your rod you feed your main line through those two nodes on the end and then you turn it on about these is they don't uh, give you a false alarm if you're in a, if you're on the edge of a current if you're in a current you will get false alarms on this but if you're on the edge of a current and also on a windy day it'll make it so you can know for sure you have a fish biting because it's only gonna go when this goes back and forth through those nodes attached to the main line uh, if wind is going to sway your line and you keep looking at it thinking you have a fish, this will help you make sure you have one. 
So sort of going up in power rod here with what I bring with me. The next rod that I bring with me is a six and a half foot Abu Garcia Silver Max. It's a medium action rod with a moderate taper. So the bend in the rod is right there in the middle. And I use eight pound P-Line CX Premium on this. I love the way that line casts. It casts like butter. But I use this rod for my medium size spinners and spoons. Reason I use this rod for those, specialize it with that, is because with the action of the rod and the size of line that I'm using, this eight pound CX Premium actually has a closer diameter to six pound line. It allows me to cast medium to lighter lures further and allows me slightly better control of those lures while they're in the water. So the next rod that I always bring with me trout fishing is a seven foot Abu Garcia Silver Max that has a light action. This rod has a ton of bend, has a ton of play in it, and I have on here six pound P-Line Floor Clear. And I use this rod for my smaller spoons, for my smaller spinner baits, and also for my smaller grubs. And like I said with the principle with the uh, medium action rod that I take, uh, this allows me to cast those smaller lures farther, have better control of those lures, and also, when you catch a big fish on this rod, it is a blast. You, you're burning out drag, the action's going all over the place. The, a, a small fish feels like a big fish on this. A big fish feels like a giant on this. I love this rod so much. This is, this is the rod my family got me for my birthday this year, and this is honestly my new favorite rod. Another rod I always bring with me, I bring this rod just about any time I go fishing because I almost always find the use for an ultralight, but it's that. It's a five foot Shakespeare ultralight rod. Now ultralight, it's very small diameter on the body of the rod, but the bend in the rod is unreal. And that allows you to play a fish longer. Uh, it allows you to use smaller baits, like I've got one of those two inch curly tail grubs on here on a one uh, 132nd ounce jig head and I also run four pound P-Line floor clear on this rod. Well there you go guys and I finally get to do that. It's been a long time coming or at least it feels like it has. I've really been chomping at the bit to make this video for you guys but that's how the trout hammer does it and now you can too. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer every single one of them. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I really do appreciate every single like, share, and subscribe I get because that's how this channel is going to grow. Once again, I'm Scott the Trout Hammer with Pex the Pisces Fishing. As always, tips up, tight lines, and have fun fishing. <laughs>